Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Aldi, located in Loudoun County, Virginia, between Union Commander Judson Kilpatrick and his 2,000 men from the 2nd and 4th New York Cavalry, and Confederate Commander Thomas T. Munford and his brigade comprised of 1,500 men of the 1st to the 5th Virginia Cavalry. This occurred on June 17, 1863. As Confederate Commander Robert E. Lee continued to move deeper into the Shenandoah Valley, his cavalry screen, led by Jeb Stuart, had done a good job at holding off Union Commander Joseph Hooker's attempts at getting through the screen. Hooker's goal was to reach the vulnerable Confederate infantry and destroy them. Hooker had left Union General Alfred Pleasanton in charge of these operations, but for weeks now, Confederate General Jeb Stuart had staved off Pleasanton's attempts to break through. In yet another attempt to break through Stuart's screens, Pleasanton dispatched Union Brigadier General Judson Kilpatrick along with the 2nd and 4th New York Cavalry with additional supporting units. The purpose was to secure a small town named Aldi, located in one of the gaps of the Bull Run Mountains, a ridgeline east of the Blue Ridge Mountains. The difficult terrain and Pleasanton's delays in ordering this movement had slowed the Union down long enough to give Confederate General Jeb Stuart time to come up with a plan. Stuart's plan to defend a vulnerable Confederate infantry consisted of three Confederate forces to defend the key gaps in the mountains, thus hopefully preventing any surprise attacks by the Union. One of the brigades was commanded by Confederate Colonel Thomas T. Munford, who was to go to Aldi to defend it and the gap it sat in against any Union probe that might appear. Confederate Colonel Munford was quicker than Union General Kirkpatrick and secured Aldi first. There, he left some of his men as pickets and proceeded on to Snickers Gap Turnpike, to use Franklin Carter's farm for a place to camp. Kilpatrick arrived on the western end of Aldi later that day. The Union 1st Massachusetts encountered the Confederate pickets left behind by Munford, forcing the Confederate pickets to retreat. In response, a large portion of the Confederate forces moved to intercept the 1st Massachusetts and promptly pushed the Union troops back. Once the Confederates successfully pushed the Union troops back, they began to rest, anticipating the fight would occur soon again. The 1st Massachusetts chose this time of all times to misunderstand what they are watching in the situation. The 1st Mass believed that even though the Confederates had won the initial skirmish, that for whatever reason the Confederates were actually retreating. Buoyed by the belief that Confederates were running, the 1st Mass brought in the rest of the Union forces. The Union Army then churned and attacked the rest of the Confederate troops and found their error. Instead of encountering a retreating Confederate force, they found a force that had high morale and a desire to fight. This resulted in Union forces being stopped by the wall of gunfire from the Confederates and then subsequently being pushed back again. Ignoring the obvious and grasping what they thought would be victory, the Union forces sent waves of attacks against the Confederates. This continued on for hours into the later afternoon, and as Munford himself arrived to reinforce the Confederates, the situation changed. Confederate General Stuart had ordered Munford to pull back westward and help Stuart stop the Union attack on Middleburg. By that evening, Munford had pulled his men away from Aldi, surrendering the town to Kilpatrick and his Union forces, not because Kilpatrick was defeating them, but because of orders. It is believed that the Union suffered approximately 305 casualties, including killed, wounded, or missing. Meanwhile, the Confederates themselves lost approximately 115 men, killed, wounded, or missing. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.